Well, are you ready for some lighter energy? I think everybody's like, yeah, I'll take some of that. Well, August is going to be a little bit of a lighter energetic month. Hi, everybody. Thomas Miller on the Fun Astrology Podcast. Let's talk about that as we turn the page from July to August tomorrow with a full moon, by the way, tomorrow afternoon in Aquarius. We'll talk about that more tomorrow. But as we went through the last couple of weeks, right, and the crescendo week, week before last, where everything was just hitting everything, then it's like the sky has taken a big breath. So this week is going to be a lighter week as far as the planets directly aspecting each other. So will next week. And then around the 14th, the week of the 14th, two weeks from today, those direct aspects or the heightened energy starts to pick back up a little, but still this month is going to be fairly light energetically. Ray Merriman even mentioned that on Saturday. Now, we do have that situation over in Moscow. That is the aside right now. I did a video on it. You can go to the video channels and take a look at that. But that is the one thing that we'll keep our eye on. And right now, we're just observing. But I did show Pluto and the North Node in both the Ukraine and the Russia charts. If you'd like to look at that, it's on the video channels. So what else besides the full moon do we have aspecting directly this week? couple of things tomorrow. We do have a couple of direct aspects tomorrow, and then we have the sun squaring Jupiter on Sunday. Then it's just moon sign changes the rest of this week. Remember, we had two yods in the sky all through last week and the weekend. Well, one of them now has dropped off. The one that is still standing is the one with Neptune at the top and then Venus and Mercury at one side of the base and the south node of the moon at the other side. That will be with us through Thursday. Then it takes about a one-week break and comes back next Thursday. So we'll just keep an eye on that. But it is with us at least for the first four days of this week. So if you put all that together, and for those of you who are feeling transformation in the air, well, if you take the aspects from week before last and you take these two yods and you put all of that together, yeah, it has been a lot. If you've been picking up on it spiritually, you can imagine the collective dealing with it without the spiritual grounding. Now, there is a kind of cool aspect if you'd like to play with this. It's only passing, and it will only be here this morning, early, early. But the moon is squeezing out the last couple of degrees of an Earth trine to Jupiter. So that's the moon in Capricorn trining Jupiter in Taurus. And that's going to fade out pretty quickly this morning. But then the moon moves into an exact trine with Uranus in Taurus. Now, last week we talked about Uranus on the Old Soul, New Soul podcast. If you'd like to catch that episode, got some really good comments from folks on that. Thank you for those of you who have heard it and enjoyed it. Kind of sent me on a path of doing some research on Uranus over the weekend. Robert pointed out that it marks the genius in your life, the genius area. I was reading some Dane Rudyard, always interesting, talking about Uranus being the thing that shakes up and clears the energetic blocks of Saturn. So Saturn's energy puts everything in constraint, everything in parameters. Uranus comes along and breaks that up. What happens when you get a hole in a dam? Or if you corral that hole in the dam, you can make electricity with it, as he pointed out. Great analogy. Great analogy. So Uranus can shake up some of those things in your life that are stuck. Well, here comes the moon in Capricorn. So there's that representative Saturn right there, right? And then you have Jupiter right close to Uranus. So this little subtle aspect in the sky today that you can catch this morning and then it will the energy of it will be gone this afternoon, but the work can certainly continue. So while you're having your coffee, you might just think about, are there some little pockets in my life that might be a little too structured, that might be too constrained, that could use a little poke in the hole in the dam and let some of that energy out? And particularly where the strength of this aspect is would be in those areas covered by Taurus. Money, certainly love, but I'm thinking about familiarity, even things that you might be willing to shake up and get a little bit unfamiliar where could you challenge security? Maybe under this lighter sky, where could you take a risk and get away with it this time? <laughs> Mars is also in a trine to the moon, so you've got some strength. And yes, that does connect them. That is a big grand trine in the sky. So Mars is the other character on this. 
So you can play with it. There's some strength there. There's kind of a cool little setup as we round the corner into tomorrow's full moon, which we'll do some howling and talking about Aquarian. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> For the next two weeks at least, right? Ah, love it. Love the break. I love the fresh air. We'll see you tomorrow. Ow, we'll get it warmed up here. Ow, ow, ow. Okay, back tomorrow. Bye.